Megger's TDR2010 is a state-of-the-art, dual-channel, high-resolution, compact time-domain reflectometer with a wide VGA color screen for locating events on paired metallic cables or coax. It can be used on any cable consisting of at least two separate conductive elements. It can also be used on two separate insulated conductors that are separated by the same distance along their length. Let's first take a quick look at what's in the box of the TDR 2010. First, there's the TDR itself. We'll go over that in a lot more detail later. The AC charger and extension cord charge the TDR2010's lithium-ion battery. There are two sets of four and one half foot long bed of nails test leads for testing unterminated paired wires and unterminated coax cable. There are two push-on F-type adapters. A very versatile carrying case is provided that allows the TDR2010 to be attached to a tripod using the four attach points of the case to be suspended around the user's neck and still have the screen remain parallel to the ground, using the Velcro strap to be attached to the user's forearm. By adjusting the straps to be securely carried in one hand, the TDR2010 can also be set on a flat surface in either a nearly upright position or a nearly flat position. A CD that contains a quick start guide, a user guide, trace expert software, trace expert user guide, safety guide. There are also paper copies of the quick start and safety guides. The TDR2010 has an intuitive interface. Let's go over that briefly now. We'll go into it in more detail later. Connections are made on the top. When the sliding cover is in this forward position, the four 4 mm safety terminals are visible. The four 4 mm bed of nails test leads are plugged into these. Slide the cover back to provide access to the dual F-type ports. Remember that there are F-type push-on connectors supplied with the TDR2010. Other push-on adapters will also work. When this little cover is lifted, you get access to the charging port and a mini USB port that allows connectivity to a PC for transferring saved traces. Let's look at the face of the TDR2010. First is the backlit 800 by 480 wide video graphic array WVGA LCD. The color combinations are also illuminated, but for now let's just say that they provide good visibility in any light conditions, including bright sunlight. Near the bottom right corner is the on-off button. In order to accidentally prevent turning the TDR2010 on and off, the button must be depressed for a second or two. Once the TDR2010 is turned on, the first thing that you'll likely want to do is choose the mode. This selects what you want the TDR2010 to do and how you want to see it. This is done via the mode button in the top right corner. It has an icon that looks like a TV screen on it. Remember that we'll cover all of these in a lot more detail later. The four up, down, left, right arrows grouped on the right side are used to navigate through the mode screen and later they are used to select setup options and move the cursors. We'll call these the navigation group. Once the desired mode is selected, the OK button is used to confirm the selection. Let's move to the six buttons along the left side, the ones with the right facing triangles on them. These are soft keys that are the selection buttons. Depending on what the TDR2010 is doing, their functions change. If you should push the wrong one of these soft keys, you can return to the previous screen by pushing the back button, which is on the right side above the on-off button. It is the one with the circle almost surrounding the upper left facing arrow. The last of these buttons on the face of the TDR2010 is the hold button. 
Pushing this will keep the current trace on the screen until the button is pushed again.